Okay, so example two, we're going to graph the reciprocal of a linear function. The function that we will consider is f of x equals 2x plus 1. This is our linear function. So we're going to take a look at um, what the reciprocal of the function is. Then we will determine the equation of the vertical asymptote for our reciprocal function. And then we are going to graph um, f of x, our original function, and its reciprocal. So uh, if f of x is equal to 2x, the reciprocal of y equals f of x is y equals 1 over 2x plus 1, so 1 over our function. The vertical asymptotes occur at any non-permissible values of y equals 1 over 2x plus 1, so we are going to determine our non-permissibles. So remember with rational expressions, whatever's in the denominator cannot equal a 0, so let's find out what x can't be. So 2x plus 1 equals 0, and so 2x is equal to negative 1, x equals negative 1 over 2. So this is our non-permissible value. And so the non-permissible value of x is equal to negative 1 over 2. Okay, and I would like you to note also that the non-permissible value of x for y is equal to 1 over f of x is the x-intercept of y equals f of x. Okay, so if you're not comfortable finding the non-permissible value, you can always find the x-intercept of your original function. Okay, so the equation of the vertical asymptote is x is equal to negative 1 over 2. So to graph f of x equals 2x plus 1, we want to use the slope and the y-intercept. So remember, this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So you can see that m is 2 and the y-intercept b is 1. Let's complete the table and then I'll go over a shortcut on how to graph this. Okay, so let's take a look. Our x-intercept of our original function is at negative 1 over 2 and 0. All right, and you can get that by plugging in um, 0 for y, right? Because x-intercepts happen when y is 0. There will be no x-intercept for our reciprocal function. Okay, asymptotes. Um, does a linear function have one? No, so none for that but you will have an asymptote for your reciprocal function. You will have a vertical asymptote where x is equal to negative 1 over 2 and you will have a horizontal asymptote where y equals 0. Okay, our invariant points will be the same for both functions, okay, because that's why it's an invariant point. It means that whatever point on y equals 2x plus 1 um, Whichever points from y equals 2x plus 1 stay the same for y equals 1 over 2x plus 1, we have an invariant point. All right, remember that it happens when y equals 1 and y equals negative 1. So we can work that out. Uh, we'll work it out on this function. So we plug in 1 for y, and we get that 2x equals 0, so x equals 0. Okay, so we have an invariant point where x is 0 and y is 1. Let's plug in negative 1 for y. So for x, and we get another point at 0, sorry, negative 1 and 1. Okay, and so the same would be true for our reciprocal function, 0 and 1, and negative 1 and 1. Okay, so what happens as x increases to the value of y? Okay, well, if we plug in larger and larger values for x into 2x plus 1, we will find that y is going to increase <coughs> in value. 
but that's not going to happen with our reciprocal function. Okay, so let's see what happens. If I plug in a rather large number for x, so I'm going to put in 50, then you will find that y is equal to 0 0.0099. Okay, and what you're going to happen, to, what you're going to see happening to y is that it approaches 0. Okay, but it will never be equal to 0. Okay, so it gets close, but not equal to. Okay, so let's graph. We're going to start by graphing our original function. So we are going to graph y equals 2x plus 1. We are going to use a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 1. Okay, so if our y-intercept is 1, that would be right here, and then our slope is 2 up, 1 to the right, 2 up, 1 to the right, and we will follow this pattern up, and then 1 to the left and 2 down, 1 to the left and 2 down, and we will follow this pattern down. Draw our line through, and this is y is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, second step, we are going to put in our vertical asymptote where x equals negative 1 half and our horizontal asymptote where y equals 0. Okay, and I'm going to use a red line for that because they're not actual parts of our graph, they're just boundaries. And so where y equal, sorry, where x equals negative 1 half, we would put a vertical line through here. Okay. And that's because this point is where x is equal to negative 1 half. That's our x-intercept of our original function. And then our horizontal asymptote will go along the x-axis where y is equal to 0. Okay, third step. We graph our invariant points. Okay, we've got two, one where we have um, a point at 0 and 1, and the other one is at negative 1 and negative 1. Okay, so 0 and 1 is right here, and negative 1 and negative 1 is right here. Okay, and then the fourth step is to graph the hyperbola. Okay, so remember that the reciprocal of linear functions gives us a hyperbola. So we want to be sure that we glide along our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So we're going to come along from the top here, and we're going to glide along. I want to use green. We're going to glide along here. We go through our vertical, or sorry, our invariant point, and we glide along the horizontal asymptote. And then over in the third quadrant, we glide along the horizontal asymptote. We go through our invariant point, and we glide along the vertical asymptote. Okay? Now, to see why we glide along our asymptotes. We're going to take a look at what happens to our y values on either side. Okay, so let's start with the vertical asymptote, where x is equal to negative 1 half. We're going to approach from the left. Okay, on our graph, that means we are coming in from the left on this side of y equals negative, or sorry, x equals negative one half. So we're going to plug a number which is just a tiny bit smaller than that. So that will be negative 0 0.50001. Okay, and that's just an arbitrary number. That's just less than negative one half. You can pick other numbers. And let's plug that in. And we're going to go 2 times negative 0.50001 plus 1, and we find that y is a very large number, negative 50,000. Okay, well, the absolute value of negative 50,000 is a very large number. And so the graph 
goes sharply down. Okay, which we can see. It goes down quite rapidly. Okay, let's approach from the right. That means we want a number for x which is slightly bigger than negative one half and so I'm going to pick x is equal to negative 0 0.49999. I'm going to plug it in. And I get a rather large positive number of 50,000. Okay, and so the graph goes sharply up. Okay, and you can see that over on the right of our vertical asymptote. It goes rather rapidly in a positive direction and y will get larger and larger. Okay, so what you should observe from this is that when I take the reciprocal of a negative small number it'll give me a negative big number. And if I take the reciprocal of a positive small number, it's going to give me a positive big number, Okay, which you can see from the work that I've done up here. Okay, now um, I don't have a lot of time to discuss what happens above and below the horizontal asymptote, so I'm just going to tell you what happens. Okay, as you can see from the graph, as x becomes a large, large number, okay, you can see that your graph gets closer and closer and closer to the y, sorry, to the x axis, and so what happens to y is y becomes very, very small, okay? And if you take a look on the left here, as x becomes a rather large negative number, y will get smaller and smaller, or closer and closer and closer to zero, okay? But it will never actually touch the x-axis, which is where y is equal to zero, okay? Um, yeah, I will have to discuss that, I think, in another video.